I wanted to just really quick, and I think we all kind of can do these, um, and we can start in whichever way, but I just wanted to do something that's like a little bit constructive right now, because I think it is really important that all of this justified anxiety and fear, and honestly, hopefully anger. I hope there's some room for anger because that is ultimately more, per that's, that's up the emotional chain than anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to frame it in those terms, like they want you anxious. And of course you're anxious. Everybody's anxious. It's fucking terrifying. We're talking about all the economic consequences. There's also like, you know, especially here, there's literally just like the fear of getting the virus, you know, mm -hmm. but um, there should be anger. There should also be clear thinking. And we each had some pieces of advice. They're probably all pretty commonsensical, but I think we can, you know, it's good to put out. So, you know, I'll go last, whichever you guys want to start. And then, you know, and again, hit us with super chats. We'll take your questions. We'll, we'll get to Burgess, but I want to make this part a little bit more focused and really get some, some stuff out there that might be useful to do. I mean, I can, I can say immediately if you live in, in a building that's, you know, a larger building or community, uh, try to organize, uh, you know, literally just put a sign in the hallway and say, like, let's set, set up a list server or Facebook group so people can communicate. Um, if somebody gets sick and they're unwell, you know, if you, need, you can pick up groceries for them. I mean, those kind of things are actually going to be very important frontline uh, actions to prevent the spread of the virus. I'd also very much uh, suggest wherever you are, um, checking out your local branch of the DSA. I know pretty much across the country, they're all organizing pretty extensive uh, mutual aid. Some of them are a little bit further along than others, but I know pretty much every chapter that I've seen is in the process of doing that. Um, you know, and that's important for both like short-term meeting people's needs and, and goals, but also it's very important too to start building those kind of community connections and being the people out there providing for folks. You know, I'm like, this is actually embodying the kind of socialist ideals that we, we, uh, we preach. Yeah. Um, Michael, you go, I'm looking for a tweet here. I wasn't All right. So I got, I got kind of a small list. The first was kind of echoes Griscom's. And I just want to just say like that, that real micro organizing in your building texting your neighbors, if you have their numbers number or putting a sign up, is not only essential for doing things if you can i always emphasize if you can like there's an older person getting their groceries for them or taking care of somebody who's sick to the extent that that's possible that also and we'll be conscious of how we phrase these things because we have to but that also is the type of thing that creates the communication and groundwork for you know maybe collectively making decisions about your rent so I'll just put that out there. It's very important. That stuff can scale up really quickly in ways that are incredibly important for taking uh, mutual aid action and then coordinating for broader political action. And I would start to think too, you know, about, um, you know, uh, doing those on as private of platforms as possible and being really conscious about, uh, you know, stuff like that. I would think this is a time to think about that. Uh, I would call up your Congress people and senators. It's better than emailing. Uh, calling really does register more. Yeah. And I would say specifically, they need to kill this Republican bill in the Senate. I don't know, maybe, David, you could put up these Jeff Stein tweets, but essentially, like, Mitch McConnell and Steve Mnuchin are cooking up like it's nothing short of a corporate coup. It's, you know, we'll go into more detail of it later, but even like the initial couple of days of like, oh, they're getting more populisty or whatever uh, to, to outflank the Democrats. They're actually not in actuality. There's a few right. things in there, but the Democrats are actually fighting for more hospital funding in this. Basically, it's a huge trillions dollar aid package to casinos, airlines, but it also includes their favorite pet projects like increasing abstinence only education. Mm -hmm. uh, no requirement to retain workers. 
first names don't have to be disclosed for six months. I don't, I'm not sure what that alludes to. Treasury gets latitude in picking who gets loans. You want Steve <laughs> with a trillion something uh, slush fund. Look at his grotesque record. No guarantees on worker health care. Supposedly, Pelosi's actually pulling the plug on this in the House, which is extraordinary because she's been, you know, nothing but an absolute failure so far. So I would demand, you know, vote against the Mnuchin McConnell Trump bill. Then you got to say, look, Rashida Tlaib has by far put forward. Bernie Sanders has put forward an amazing plans. Ilan Omar has put forward great stuff. And I think Rashida Tlaib has put forward the most comprehensive one preloaded debit cards, two grand a month for everybody for at least a year. Uh, and then, of course, expanding workers' benefits, uh, ex unemployment, and demanding no stock buybacks. And I would also look at Matt Stoller on this stuff specifically. He's really good. And you maybe even could just list out talking points. There needs to be things also to protect small businesses. I mean, this is another thing that, like, I think as people who understand we need to go to a post-capitalist economy, we also need to realize that if this becomes just like another unmitigated corporate power grab across the economy, um, you know, not, we, we don't want to valorize small businesses, but we do want to recognize that they are not mega corporations and a lot of well-being is tied up in them and they are going to get fucked in these current bills. So we need yeah. to talk on them as well. The other two things really quickly, the Bill Barr DOJ is putting forward rules to put forward to hold people in indefinite detention. It's a report in Politico. This is not in any way, you know, this is not on the margins. This is not being reported by us. This is not speculation. Uh, people should be on their toes about military control and things like that. I mean, there was a piece in Newsweek. But one thing we know for certain is that the Bill Barr DOJ is basically asking for judges to have enormous discretion during times of emergency to, as an example, hold people without trial. You need to call and demand that everybody kill that in the House. That could not be more important. And again, always credit where credit's due. Mike Lee's all over it. And if it requires he take the lead on it, fine. But everybody should be all over this um, aggressively. Uh, yeah, I think paying attention to Congress right now and calling them. If you called during the Obamacare, save Obamacare thing, like this is a moment to definitely call, especially if you are quarantined and just have, and have a, access to a phone. Because, I mean, it, you, like you said, 2008, 2009, it's, the similarities there. The difference is the um, communications technology is much different than it was in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. and, and people need to be able to see what's happening uh, in real time better than they did uh then so 100 percent. and then just the two things real quick just to, to to put it out is if you can i emphasize that a million times how can you help people who are on the front lines literally people getting laid off people who are in high risk professions uh you know undocumented people still terrorized by ice I would include artists and small business people. If you're in a position, um, you know, to sustain and support and put some energy towards those things, do it. And finally, like use social media to amplify all of these things, like making sure those DOJ rules don't go through or the monstrosity they're trying to pass in Congress or the great thing that Rashida is putting forward. Matter of fact, also, if you can ship her a campaign contribution, she just got a primary challenger from some, democratic mega hack and we need to make sure she stays in congress uh but the last thing i would also say is like there is an emotional economy to this if you can take technology breaks sometimes read a book do some other things you know meditate cook home exercise watch something funny whatever listen to music mm -hmm. and share some of that content on social media like it's really important that they're not just be like a ceaseless negativity and anxiety cycle. And at the same time, we need to be totally clear eyed. So anyways, that's it. I'm off my box. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS.
Thanks, everybody.